You are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocus Radio. We are here once again today. We have another amazing show lined up for y'all. We're going to talk to a certified professional organizer, Miss Angie Heitch. And she is someone doing amazing things. She's going to teach you everything you need to know. I mean, everything. You can go to her website, shipshape.solutions. But first and foremost, I just want to welcome Angie to the show. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks. Man, it's great to have you on. So, man, it's all about decluttering and organizing. That's something that, man, is very important to all of our lives. So tell us a little bit about your business. How did you get started? All right. So I kind of had a quite a winding path to end up doing what I what I do now, um, had careers in medicine, careers in education, uh, raised a couple of girls, um, who are adults now, but I uh, always loved to organize. And I didn't realize for a long time that it's actually a profession and that people will pay you to do that. Um, it took until my husband and I reached empty nest stage before I was uh, brave enough to take the big step to start my own business and to he- help people declutter and organize their homes. So that was August of 2016 and uh, just past six years now. And uh, the writing, um, I started just with a blog for my business and started doing some presentations and um, discovered I had more to say than I could say in, you know, a few hundred words. So published my first book in December 2020. And um, so I, I love helping people learn about what clutter really is and um, how it distracts us from our priorities and how to clear it so you can focus on what's most important in your life. I like that. And your book, what's the title of your book that you came out with again? It's called Unholy Mess, What the Bible Says About Clutter. That's awesome. Now, that is something that you mentioned earlier in the show about it's not just the home, it's also our mind. So touch on that a little bit. What's some of the ways that we can understand if our mind is being cluttered up? Yeah, so um, once I had been working with clients for a while and uh, been in their homes and seen the physical clutter that they were dealing with, for a while, I was I was uh, kind of arrogant, and I, I remember coming home thinking, oh, "I'm so glad to be back in my home that has no clutter. I am clutter free." And uh, when I started learning more about it and reading more scripture that was talking about it, and I realized it's not just about the stuff because clutter really is anything that gets in the way of our priorities. And so I started looking at my own life and looking around my home. I didn't really have much in the way of physical clutter. I didn't have piles of stuff that I didn't need. Um, My home was very neat and orderly. However, when I looked at my schedule, uh, things that, you know, a calendar just packed full of things that weren't necessarily serving me well. And then with my mind, uh, taking a hard look at how much time I was spending on my phone and my other digital devices um, about uh, just worry and unforgiveness and just how my brain was constantly spinning with things other than what I was actually doing at the time. Um, I remember as far as the uh, phone addiction, my family for years would beg me to get off the phone. And I really didn't think I had that much of a problem. Um, but it's kind of embarrassing to admit it took years of them talking to me, to me about it before I realized how big of a problem I had. Um, it's still something that I deal with, but uh, I'm trying to get really more intentional about being with whoever I'm with and uh, respecting them enough to make them 
uh, more important than the other things that I could be doing at the time. Once again, this is uh, Island Focus Radio talking to our guest, Angie Heitch. And man, yeah, we're still uh, exploring the book that, that you wrote on Holy Mess. And the book also helps people to examine themselves because that's probably something we all struggle with and, and if we're honest with ourselves we can probably find some things like to your point earlier it could really be blocking our peace or just blocking our progress in life tell us on that for the audience as far as ways they can start to be honest with themselves and figure out okay what could possibly be blocking me yeah so it really is the whole uh, process of discovering whether or not you have clutter in your life and dealing with it. it it's a really a soul searching kind of effort um, and I think for a lot of my life i I tried to keep myself so busy that I didn't have time to think of the about those really deep questions. Um, and it was only when I slowed down and decided, okay, I've got to take a look at this um, and ask myself some really hard questions that uh, I saw that, no, I might not have piles of stuff in my home like my clients, but I had as much or more of an issue with clutter than any of them. Um, and the process of kind of clawing out of my way out of that uh, unholy mess that my life had become was was a difficult one, but uh, so worth every bit of effort. Um, I think we have to be willing to uh, be honest about our relationship with our stuff, our relationship with our time, how we use our time, and about the things that we uh, that we find ourselves thinking about. Uh, how we, you know, what kind of uh, media we consume. Um, there's just really so much to it. There's a whole lot of questions in the book, uh, very thought provoking questions. Um, again, it's, uh, it's difficult, this whole self reflection process. Um, I wish I hadn't waited so many years to, to do it. But um, when you take the time to really establish what's most important to you. And then you look at everything in your life and decide, okay, is this bringing me closer to what my priorities are? Is this helping me reach my goals? Is this serving me well? Does it align with my priorities or not? And if it doesn't, then I got to make some tough decisions. Yeah, I like that. It's, it's like, uh, is it pushing me up or is it pulling me down type of Absolutely. situation? When people, because you mentioned time, uh, time management, when people are trying to find ways to improve that, what are some of the time management tips that you've been able to discover? Um, okay, so I think uh, one, one of my favorites uh, comes from Laura Vanderkam. She's one of the best time management gurus, has several books, has a great uh, podcast, Before Breakfast. Um, one of the ways we get trapped into being too busy is uh, sometimes someone will ask us to do something and it's way in the future. And we look at our calendar, let's say it's three months from now. And we look at our calendar and we say, oh, I don't have anything on my schedule. That should be fine. So we'll say yes. But we forget that between then and three months from now, other things are going to get on our calendar. And when that time comes, we're just going to be just as busy as we always are. And so Laura's suggestion is that when someone asks you to do something, pretend that that event is happening tomorrow and tomorrow your schedule is jam packed. Now, if you don't, if you are thinking to yourself, okay, that's tomorrow. Um, oh my goodness, my schedule is really busy tomorrow, but this is such a great opportunity. This is just perfect. This is exactly in line with my goals and my priorities. So I'll figure out a way to clear my schedule. Yes, I absolutely wanted to do that. If that's not how you feel about it, then just go ahead and say no. Um, 
because if, if you're not absolutely 100% yes, then you're going to feel the same way about it in three months. You're going to be uh, hating the fact that you said yes. Um, that one thing has helped me. A, a lot of people have trouble saying no to something. Um, and so uh, that has ended up being really helpful for me. I like that tip. I like that tip. It's, it's almost like if you're if you're at a restaurant and you're going to order something on the menu, you're not just going to order something that you kind of think you might like. No, you're going to order something that you know deep and down, like, yes, I want to eat this on my plate. Mm -hmm. So I like that uh, idea and that concept. Now, once again, listen to Ivy Focus Radio talking to Angie Heights. When you, when you started growing your clientele and growing your business, what were some of the challenges that you had to overcome as far as just branding and marketing yourself? Huh, let's see, I haven't been asked that in a while. Um, I, I think one of the toughest things, especially for a new business owner, you're so eager to get the work that you say yes to everything. And after a while you realize Okay, some of the people that I'm working with, it, it's it's not really, this is not really uh, what I'm best at. We're not a good fit for each other. Um, and so now I try to be really intentional about, you know, who am I best skilled to help? What kind of client can get the most benefit from me? And um, just making sure that as I'm uh, talking on the phone to someone or when I meet them in that initial consult visit that, you know, it, it's kind of a two-way street. It's an interview from the client to me. Am I the best fit for them and from me to the client? So uh, it's, it's figuring out exactly what you're best at doing and uh, whether this client that you're looking at and considering is a good fit for that and being willing to say no if they're not. So being a little more picky, I guess, so that you are finding the best clients because you don't really want to take, take too much time on a situation that's not a good fit. And you have to be willing to spend some time um, directing all your marketing, all your efforts toward finding that ideal client. Uh, one thing that I that was really interesting um, as I was uh, going through this process of figuring out my best clients, I decided to take a look at all the clients I had served and choose a few that were just the the perfect type clients. I picked kind of three different. Um, types of clients and I took them all to lunch and I interviewed them and said, you know, told them you're one of my best clients because of these different reasons. Now, if I want to find more people like you, how do you think is the best way to reach out to them? And what, how have I helped you? And um, that was a really useful exercise. I, I uh, learned some things about things I was doing that weren't uh, leading to these types of clients and new ideas that I could try. So narrowing down that uh, target market and directing all your efforts to that and being willing to say no to someone who doesn't meet that uh, criteria. It too, it sounds like you really just really refined the whole process. Okay, what is my mm -hmm. brand? Who am I? So that way I'm a mirror as far as who I'm attracting to my business. And yeah. you also, you speak as well. You, you don't just do consulting and, and helping with organizing all that stuff, but you also speak as well. When you have opportunities to speak, what are some of the key points that you start out with? Um, I, I, Generally, at some point, I'm going to touch on clutter in some way <laughs> um, because it's kind of the mainstay of uh, what I talk about. Um, I like to throw some storytelling. Uh, people love to hear about client stories, especially situations where we 
uh, find interesting objects as we are decluttering the home. Um, and I try to make everything just uh, tailored exactly to that particular audience. Um, uh, you know, I, I'm going to be, it's going to be completely different if I'm speaking to a mom's group versus a group of seniors. Um, and <clears throat> I guess I'm going to always focus on clutter. I'm going to always focus on um, planning ahead um, and about taking the time to figure out your priorities. And again, just figuring out what's distracting you from those and what you can do about it. I do talk a lot about daily habits. Um, when you think about decluttering and organizing, we often think in terms of like spending a whole Saturday cleaning out a closet. And although I love doing that, I really, really love starting with a completely uh, disorganized, crazy mess and spending hours pulling everything out, going through it, determining what what's trash, what's recycle, what's donate, what's keep. But the thing is, we can make such uh, a big difference with five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. One of the habits that I uh, tell people that tends to be my favorite tip as far as physical clutter, I tell people, um, I call it daily decluttering. If they would have one container somewhere um, in an easy to access place in their home and every time anyone in the home sees something that they don't love and use, I just do those two questions. Do I love it? Do I use it? As soon as you say some, see something that doesn't, uh, that you don't love and use, you put that in that decluttering container. And then when that container fills up, you donate it. And then you do it over and over and over. And so without taking a whole lot of time, just with those small efforts can make a big difference. Um, I talk about the, the routine. I mean, the simple routines, laundry, dishes, daily pickup, those little habits that you repeat over and over just are the difference makers. They're game changers. I like that. Once again, listen to I'm Focus Radio. I'm talking to Angie Heights. And yeah, when someone's listening to this right now, maybe they... <laughs> They're late to the party and it's time for them to start decluttering, but maybe they feel overwhelmed about starting. Based on your experience and people that you've been able to help, what's some common uh, good practice to begin that process? Yeah, it, it's so common to feel overwhelmed at the beginning. I think we all feel that whenever we're faced with a big task and uh, when people call me for help, that is the number one thing they say. I'm so overwhelmed. Um, and that overwhelm tends to kind of paralyze us uh, because we're like, oh, well, forget it. I just, I don't even know what to do. Um, so I think it's always good to start with just kind of taking taking an overall um evaluation of if you're looking, if it's your home and you feel like it's got some physical clutter around us, looking at the home as a whole and to say, what is it? How would I describe it now? What do I see? How does it feel? What do I want? What are my goals? I would like for my this home to be, you know, write it down, get the other people in the family to contribute to that. Um, how, what do you, is say, if you, or you can approach a particular room and say, let's say the living room. What do we do in here? And how does it function? What do I want it to be like? If I could wave a magic wand and the room was exactly what we wanted, what would it look like? And how would it feel in here? And then get a very clear idea of what you're going toward. And then when you've got that clear idea, then I will sometimes just pick a corner of the room and go clockwise or counterclockwise or whatever and just look at everything that's in there. Does this, does this, uh, is this used in this room? Is it used at all? Does it belong here? Does it have a home somewhere else? And just go through each 
item and the way the room is set up and go around clockwise or counterclockwise through the whole room and, and with those clear goals in mind, if you start with just a small space, it could even be, you might just start with a drawer. Let's say the junk, you've got a junk drawer of sorts and it's driving you crazy. You might want to just start with that. If you start with something small and you see some progress, uh, it gives you some motivation to keep going. Let's say you clear that drawer and it's like, oh man, now I can even open it. It's not, you know, <clears throat> getting stuck because it's so crammed. Okay, great. Now what can I do? Now I'm going to try this closet. And I can use the same principles I did before. I'm going to evaluate everything. Do I love it? Do I use it? And, uh, you know, just get it arranged in a way that makes sense to you. So it's always great to start with a clear uh, idea of what you're going for and then just take it one small step at a time. There's not a wrong way to do it. If if uh, someone met with 10 different organizers and asked for their help in their home, you might get 10 different approaches. There's no wrong way. The only wrong way is to not do anything, to let that overwhelm stop you in your tracks. So get your goals in mind and just start somewhere. Um, sometimes perfectionists like me will end up not getting much done because we want it to be the perfect way. You know, I've got to have all my tools. I've got to have the whole list in order. And, and often it's just, just start. Start somewhere. Done is better than perfect. Make some progress. And that's the key, what you just said. Done is better than perfect because it's Absolutely. like if someone listened to every podcast in the world or read every single book in the world about inspiration and self-help or leadership or whatever, it won't do you no good if you don't practice it. So you mm -hmm. have to practice what you are preaching. So when, I mean, I'm a music guy, so music might help too. Throw on some music and start going. And by the end oh, of the I song, love, yeah. <laughs> you might have something yeah. done. Now, when you have the opportunities to work with someone who has finally accomplished their goal, was usually your common uh, feedback from people after they have been able to organize their room or their house or whatever the case may be? That's a really good question. Um, the things people talk about the most are they have so much more time. They're not having to spend time looking for things. They're not, they, they have more money because they're not buying things they can't find. They feel more at peace in their surroundings. Uh, some people are finally able to have guests into their home for the first time, maybe in years. They're not, uh, they're, it doesn't stay perfect, but when things, you know, when times get crazy and things get out of order in a, a little bit, it doesn't take long to get it back to that state. Um, so they have time to do the things that they really want to do because they don't have to spend so much time clearing up the clutter. Man, that's good. I can see that with uh, just, you know, physical and both uh, mindset as well, decluttering your mind. Mm -hmm. I can only imagine, you know, as you get better, because no one's perfect, but as you get better, you really can do a lot more because you're not caught up into all the clutter that's in your mind as well. Yeah, Once again, and with the clutter in our minds, um, so many times, uh, some of that clutter is that we don't have a really good organized system for the things that we have on our to-do list. So so we find ourselves saying, oh, I got to remember to stop by the store and I got to call so-and-so and I got to do this and that and that. And we're trying to like keep that all in our heads and our brains are not made for storing information. We, we can't keep it all in there. So... Um, I love David Allen's book, Getting Things Done, where he talks about taking those, he calls those open loops, uh, something that's not in the state it should be, and putting them into trusted systems. So whether it's a, a, a to-do list on paper or it's a digital one or it's a reminder on your iPhone or whatever, you got to have a system to get that out of your head into a place where you know it all, uh, it won't, you won't forget about it so that your mind is more clear to, to think about uh, positive things and, and ideas and to dream and 
to imagine. And yeah, I like that. It goes back to what you said earlier in the interview about if you just start at the drawer and it's mm-hmm. like, okay, if you can accomplish that and boom, you can get the room and then you can get that room then you get in the next room. And then before you know mm-hmm. it, your house is starting to look <laughs> like it's in better shape because you, your, your attention to detail has grown over time. So yeah. once again, I want to say thank you to Angie Heitch for being on the show today on Refocus Radio. Go to our website, shipshape.solutions. Before we let you go, man, if someone wanted to uh, connect with you and learn more about your services and your resources, what's the best way that they can do that? Uh, best way to get in touch with me is probably email Angie at shipshape.solutions. Solutions. Um, I'm also on Facebook. I'm on Instagram, Shipshape Solutions Underline. Um, um, I'm currently, I'm not currently taking new clients as far as organizing, but I am lining up um, engagements for speaking. And uh, you can find information on my book. There's lots of free uh, resources on my website. So, but I love to talk to readers. I, and I love to talk about organizing challenges. Um, so, thanks so much for the opportunity. Yeah, I want to say thank you again, Angie Heitch, for being on the show today. I want to say thanks for taking time. Uh, you scheduled to talk to I'm Focus Radio. 